just do what you're doing, I'm gonna do what I do. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know what was going through his mind because I can't read his mind. I just knew I didn't want to get into an argument with okay. him. So I figured if I don't have a conversation, you can't argue if you don't <laughs> have That's a <right>. conversation. <laughs> so I figured we'll keep it, I'll keep it light, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say much of anything. So and avoiding the conversation. Yes, and so mm -hmm. I didn't, something felt strange. So I said, you know, let me speed up my time to leave the home. And I was going upstairs to look for barrettes for my daughter. Mm -hmm. And as I went up, my husband uh, followed behind me. And um, he again asked me for a family meeting. The children are down in the living room. Okay. And I'm upstairs not feeling any danger. And because you never seen right, had any reason to feel that never, from Never, because he husband. was never physically abusive, so I'm, I'm okay. not even thinking that anything physical can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just trying to avoid an argument. Okay. <laughs> and so he then says to me, real strange, um, are you going to talk to me now? I'm just like, what is, what is he talking about? So I turn, because he's to my left, mm -hmm. to look at him to see what he was talking about. And when I turned, there was a 22 caliber gun pointed at my wow. left temple. And before I can really react, I know I turned my head, he shot me, he pulled the trigger. Wow. And that bullet caught me um, in the back here of my head and it passed through and it's on this side of my head now. So it's still- So the bullet is still- just in Lodged in my head. Okay, um, in and then he proceeded to shoot me again. Okay, let me back up a little mm -hmm. bit. Now you said when he shot you mm -hmm. and the bullet went from one side to the other, mm -hmm. And later on, you found out that how dangerous that was, and the fact that doctors couldn't believe you were still alive. Yes. Because what were yes. some of the things that could have happened what could, with what, the bullet going right, straight across right. through your as through I your tell head. you, Ron, the funny thing, how I found out was they kept talking about this critical patient, mm. the critical patient, and I turned to my nurse. I was like, well, "What happened? Who's critical? What happened?" <laughs> and she, <laughs> and she, she looked at me and she said, "You, Miss Grant." I said, "Oh." It's me. I was like, oh, okay. Wow. Because I'm fighting so hard around to stay alive. But what I okay. found out because I asked that question was um, when the bullet passed from one side of my head to the other, what the doctors were shocked about was that it could have severed my vocal cords, mm -hmm. my spinal cord, uh, and it could have just killed me. Mm -hmm. And they could not, when they realized that when I had to tell them where the bullet was, they were, they, all four doctors looked at each other like, mm -hmm. oh my God. And we're going to get back to that point where why they looked at you that way. So let's just back up a little bit. Okay. So now you get shot and you, you turn your head as he's shooting mm -hmm. and so the bullet goes uh, through one, from one side to the other. And what happens right after that? What do you feel? What's going on? Are you... Oh, I've, I'm feeling like I'm dying. Okay. No, not like I was. Okay, and how do you know? What did that feel like? For you? me, um, I describe it as the blackness of death. Okay. Um, I describe it as a blackness not of this world, like not the black that you mm -hmm. have on. It's okay. a blackness that I've never seen. Okay. And I felt death move mm -hmm. into my body. It started on the right, on the left side. Okay. As the bullet was moving, actually death was moving. Okay. So it seemed like it was moving very slow, and I was standing there saying, oh my God, I'm 34 years old and I'm dying. I am dying. Mm -hmm. But one of the amazing things that happened for me that I was, I'm thankful I got privy to witness, I heard my spirit in the back of me talking to God, asking God, please do not take us yet. And I'm like, us, who's us? Mm -hmm. Because we have too much to do. We do. I'm, and, I, and I'm experiencing all of this, at this okay. as I feel the death mm -hmm. um, in my body. And I'm just like, what is that? I, I had so such a clarity. Was interceding for you. I believe so. And you didn't Rhonda. even understand what was going on. I didn't on. understand what was going on. Okay. I didn't know what we had to do. I didn't know mm -hmm. what we needed to stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> what was this we thing, huh? Yeah, what was this we mm -hmm. thing that me and spirit, it's me and then the spirit, and spirit needs my body, okay. you know, to live. Yes. And so spirit is begging God, don't take us yet because I'm dying and mm -hmm. I know I'm dying and I feel me dying. Okay. And um, it's not a good feeling. It wasn't a good feeling, but in that what maybe was split seconds in the natural, I believe I was transported into a spiritual realm mm -hmm. and it seemed like a very long time mm -hmm. that I was there and that this whole peace took place. Okay. And I'm so thankful that I, I lived to be able to share that um, because that's very special to me mm -hmm. and, and very real and it really happened. Yes. I, it Amazing really, story. really, I couldn't even make something like, like that up. I wouldn't even know. Right, to and, and, and that's make up something. amazing what you explained to us. But even with that, that wasn't the end of it. No. So you're, you're feeling yourself dying mm -hmm. and with this incredible black that's unlike any other black, uh, you're hearing your spirit have a conversation mm -hmm. with God about keeping you two there. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? 
what happens then, um, I felt what I describe as this bolt of lightning. Mm -hmm. It jolted me at the top of my head and it jolted my body to the left. Mm -hmm. And when I came back up, the death was gone. I was alive. Mm -hmm. My whole Jesus. body was back to what I consider normal. Okay. <laughs> um, and I turned to run. <laughs> okay. I had the mind to run. I had the most clarity I ever had in my whole life. Mm -hmm. I wish it would come back. I wish that would come back. And, and I, you said I, that clarity I, lasts for a little while. Then it too. lasts for a little while okay. because it kept. I knew. That I knew what I was doing before I thought it or knew to do it. Mm -hmm. And in that interim, somehow or somewhere in that time, my husband then shoots me in my thigh. Okay. But I don't know I'm shot in the thigh. I mm -hmm. don't feel it. I just know I'm shot in the head and I'm going to die any minute. And my children remember downstairs now. They're mm -hmm. looking up. I run out the bedroom. And I get to the top of the stairs, and he then shoots me in my butt. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, I don't feel that either, mm -hmm. but I just feel like a pain. I don't know what's going on. And I literally dove down the stairs from a standing uh, position okay. to whatever the clarity I had knew to get out of danger, right. that we had to dive down the stairs. I didn't tell myself to do that. I just mm -hmm. did it. And the doctors were also shocked that I didn't break any ribs. Um, I had no rug burns because mm -hmm. all I had on was a nightgown because it's mm -hmm. 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. I'm running from the person you loved and knew and, you know, you in a, you in a war zone mm -hmm. in your own home. And um, he shot at me all the way down. He shot all six bullets at me. And so now I'm shot three times. And then halfway, I don't know when, but at some point he shot me in my foot, okay. um, in my left foot. Mm -hmm. And that broke my foot. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also had this covering okay. that I felt was another spiritual covering. It covered me from my head down to my ankles, literally. <laughs> to my ankles and I felt this cushion okay. and I felt something got in my head down the stairs and I'm asking what is that but I don't have time to to analyze that I just gotta I'm screaming Marquise Corey Sharia wait for me mommy's coming mommy's coming mm -hmm. wait for me and I get down the stairs uh, four bullets only know about the one okay. but I got four bullets in my body now now just to, because we only have a few minutes mm -hmm. and I want to make sure I get to letting people know what you're doing now so you're, you're, you you jump down the stairs literally and you're kind of crawling away and you get shot in the foot. And then all this time when you grab the kids and you escape and you mm -hmm. go to a neighbor's house and being shot four times, there was no blood. No blood. No blood, which is another no, miracle. Another miracle. No blood. <laughs> but you didn't bleed to death with no. all the shots. And only until you got there, then uh, when you decide to rest right. your head uh, is when the blood came from your head. Right. So. The doctors say that your, your story, and we're listening to your story, so we know it's a miracle story. Thank you. So you go on. Now, uh, before we even go to you, the things that you did after this whole incident, mm -hmm. because I know myself being a survival that this whole aftermath you go through, and your right. kids probably went through as well. But your husband decides to take his life, yes, and my you knew it. Suicide. The, the Holy Spirit just let you know mm -hmm. that, okay, he's, he's, you know, he shot himself. Yes. When the police came, they were shocked that you had that knowledge. Right. And so after going through all this, what is the, what do you do with the rest of your life? What did you start doing after that? When you realized that, uh, did you go start telling your story? Did yes, you... I, um, we went through, first we went through a whole lot of therapy. Okay. Um, a whole lot, lot, lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 10 years worth of therapy. Okay. In the midst of, but in the midst of the therapy and the pain, mm -hmm. I, um, you know, Rhonda, I just really had to find out how could something like this happen to me? Mm -hmm. I was a good person. Mm -hmm. I was as good of a wife as I could be. We won't get yes. a divorce, but okay, that's 50-50, right? Mm -hmm. I, could, I could accept that. But what I could not accept was, why would you do something like that to me? Mm -hmm. um, you know, to want to kill me. Right, and in front of your children. In front of my children. Which so is so sad. So for me, it wasn't trying to be this advocate or this political activist that I am or mm -hmm. an author. It was really just trying to find out how could something like this happen to me. And let me, with that said, Apostle, because I definitely want to make sure you have a quick uh, say so, what is your comment on the things that you're hearing, even with the miracle of her story and the discovering and the Holy Spirit speaking to her? Yes. You know, uh, to be honest with you, it's almost as if it's unbelievable yes. because uh, I'm sure that with all so this is not happening to me. This can't be happening to me. But just listening to you, and I believe that your story is a, is a story of encouragement, your book, mm -hmm. a book of encouragement. Exactly. And, and I challenge all men um, to, to read this, to, to get this book and read the book yes. because uh, just listening and hearing how calm, cool, collective that he was. Yes. And right. that, that's even a more dangerous mm -hmm. yes. situation. And, and my prayer mm -hmm. is that women would have the awareness and the discernment. And even with the book, I believe as you share, it will cause people to be aware and to be conscious of 
the silent rage. Yes. Mm. You know, someone、thing. can move.